Watercolor Fundamentals, Episode 8, Brushes. So today we're going to talk about watercolor brushes. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of different types of brushes. I think I've got essentially kind of one of every main type of brush um, that's out there. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through them. I'm gonna start with kind of your standard brushes and you know, there are definitely gonna be people out there with more in-depth knowledge of the particular functions and capabilities of some of these because I just don't use them um, very much. But I'd like to kind of talk about some qualities of the brushes, things that you might wanna look for when you're acquiring brushes and hopefully um, some of this information will help you from making uh, some of the mistakes that I have made in the past, which has ended up in some of these brushes that I have that uh, I'd like to say I use regularly, but really in the last number of years, I've whittled things down to a very core set of brushes that really suit my personal tastes. Um, so let's uh, start here. And we'll kind of start with what I consider to be, you know, if you're just getting started and you don't have any brushes, well, I guess you'd be in the process of getting brushes. Um, you actually haven't started yet. This is the pairing that I would recommend move somebody out of the way here so it's a little bit clearer. This is the kind of pairing um, I would recommend. Whether it's these brushes or a brushes by a different brand, I mean, really, you want to find something that's comfortable for you. But um, a size eight round and a size twelve round, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of these. And even if you end up moving to you know a different style of brush later on, I have found that time and time again, I come back to these. Um, and even, you know, just this, this kind of size pairing, this is really good. Like, you know, if I'm doing four by sixes and things like that and little sketchbooks, this is a great little brush for that. And even in those smaller sizes, you know, I can get away with washes with this brush on the smaller sizes, not so much on the bigger sizes, but, you know, for a large chunk of my work, um, I'm not washing the entire page, you know, even an eight by 10, 11 by 15. I'm, I'm doing, you know, I would say areas about yay big. Um, you know, I can cover that area pretty quickly with a 12. So you'll get a lot of versatility from these. And with some nice moisture control, you can get a nice sharp point, but you can also really load them up with your washes and, you know, spread that paint around they're just really, really versatile. Now, the choice ultimately is going to be when you get into these. If you're just starting out, a good synthetic is, is going to do you just fine. Um, this is also a synthetic, but I think it's a little bit of a, of a more premium synthetic. It's by Escoda, which is a company in Spain. And these are their Versatile line. Uh, they're quite lovely. Um, they're... Uh, designed to kind of mimic the behavior of, of sable. So they got a nice, uh, they're not too firm, they're not too floppy. Um, they got a really nice, nice feel to them. They look kind of cool too. I even like this little bit at the bottom here where it kind of goes to the darker color. But yeah, they're, they're a very nice brush. Um, and if you're, you know, one that's concerned about the treatment of animals and, and all that kind of stuff, and these are a really, really good choice because these are synthetic. Um, so an eight and a 12, this is really a, a good pairing. Um, there's all sorts of different sizes out there, 10, 14 and upwards, um, eight, six, fours, you know, there's all sorts of, of different sizes, but this is kind of a really solid go-to pairing 
I use this quite regularly from for small paintings right up to about 11 by 15s or a quarter sheet. So I'll put those there. So a good round. Other brushes that are pretty common are going to be flats. Now, here's two types of flats. And one of the main things to note is the length difference. Now, I'm always the first to admit I'm terrible with a flat brush. I mean, I, honestly, I just have not spent enough time using them. They're great for getting nice, you know, rectangular, sharp edge um, lines on the paper. But, you know, you can take a look at the work by uh, American watercolorist Frank Webb, um, who uses a lot of flat brushes in his work, and you can really see it in, in his style. Um, they are, you know, a, a good brush, uh, and in the hands of someone skilled with them, I have seen pretty amazing things. I'm just not one of those. So, but this here, there's two, you can see the two differences. This is a long flat, and then this is what I consider to be a more regular sized flat. Um, and something to also keep an eye out for too is just the way that these things get named, right? This is called a square wash. It really is a flat brush. Um, I saw a lot of these names when I was getting started out and I was like, no, I don't need that. I need a flat. I was just literally looking for the word flat. Otherwise I thought I had the wrong thing, um, but it is a flat brush. Now this is a, actually a really interesting brush, um, very beautiful um, handle, this Princeton Neptune series. And these are synthetic as well, but the synthetic hairs in here are, um, designed to mimic squirrel. So it's a, a softer hair. So they're, they're very soft um, to the touch and very soft with the stroke on the paper, which is something that I, I quite like in a flat. Um, this, however, is like white taclon. These are the White Sables by Robert Simmons. And if it was shorter, I don't think I would like this brush very much. But because the hairs are a fair bit firmer than the Neptune, and because they're longer, I still get a nice soft touch at the tip. And then because of the length, it can actually hold a fair bit of paint in here too, which I do find kind of nice. I do like this brush. It's not a question whether I you know, like or don't like the square brushes or the flat brushes, I do like them. I'm just not very good with them, so. All right, and then we'll kind of stick with the, the round thing for a moment, and then I'll talk about two brushes that are very similar to these. They're very similar in size, but these are more of your calligraphy style brushes, and these have been you know, my go-to brushes for really just over the last two years. Um, I switched over to these. I have I've had these particular brushes for quite some time. I really like the fact that they're, you know, similar in size because as I mentioned, this is a really good pairing of sizes. It gets you through a lot of paintings for many years. Um, but these are actually not synthetic, and but they are, are a combination of hairs. So slightly firmer on the inside, slightly softer out the outside. And the interesting thing that I like about these is as you control the moisture with them, I can get a range of, of effects with them. They, they will kind of splay apart a little bit and get some nice little small fine uh, textures, great for you know little detail feathers on birds and things like that that I like to paint. Um, or even using them for you know uh, landscape scenes, forests, and things like that. You can get lots of really unique textures with these right down to your traditional lines that I would get with a, a standard round. So I really like them. I also think aesthetically, they're quite cool to look at. And should I ever decide to invest in something to hang them from, um, I, I could always do that if I wish. But yeah, these are, these are really, really great brushes. But I, I more point them out that, like when I'm teaching, I don't suggest that people go get this, right? I will always suggest that someone gets that. Um, there, these are more readily available. Uh, these are available, but you know, they also require a little bit of getting used to. 
Continuing in the round thing, this is another round, um, as you can see, uh, another synthetic round. And I use this for just details, right? Small little details, things that um, I will always err on the side of the largest brush that I can feel comfortable with for an area that I'm painting. But when I need to get into tiny little areas, usually it's like pupils and stuff like that, I will go to this. Um, it's nice and, and firm and it works very well. So then we'll get into another stretched out round brush, okay? This was another brush name that threw me for a loop when I was getting started. Um, I wanted a rigger, something called a rigger, but finding riggers was not always the easiest thing because I was running into things like scripts and um, liners and script liners and all sorts of different things. But really something that's long and thin, right, is pretty much a rigger. At least that's what I consider it. And they're great for thin, thin lines, branches in trees, all those types of, of little thin details, wires um, between poles if you are painting street scenes. These are great for, for that type of thing. Um, and this brush in particular, so this is like a four and this is a one, so you can see the difference in size. You're gonna get very thin lines with this. With a gentle touch, you'll get very thin lines with this too. Um, but I actually prefer the four because with the touch, gentle touch, I can get a nice thin line, but I apply it in a little bit and I can vary the thickness of the line a lot more easily than I can with, with this one. So a rigger brush or script or liner, um, all very similar. Another type of, well, brush that is also round is we start getting into mops or quills, okay? So these are both that type of brush. Um, I usually call them mop brushes. I have heard people call them quills as well. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact that the wires wrapped around, maybe looking like an old quill pen, not too sure. And these are two, they're very similar in size. Um, one here is actually squirrel, real squirrel. So it is all natural. It's a lovely brush, it gets a nice point and it holds a heck of a lot of paint in this thing. Um, and the neat thing about this too is again, with moisture control, I can actually get a nice uh, tip with this, do some detail work and things like that. Um, and then I'm not talking like illustrative detail work, but if, you know, if I wanna get some little sharp points in a painting, uh, in a landscape, in a forest scene, even with birds, I can control the moisture with this and still get something that looks quite nice, but I can also fill it up with paint and cover a whole sky, sky, land, whatever I want with this brush and not have to worry. I can do it quickly. So I can, if I wanna do any wet on wet techniques, I can get that down super fast and then get back in there with um, additional color or a different consistency of paint and do wet on wet techniques. This is another type of mop. This is one that's by Escoda. It's their Ultimo series, and um, this one is uh, synthetic. So it's designed to behave like squirrel. Squirrel is generally the, um, at least what I have encountered, the, the standard natural hair in a mop. Um, so, you know, when they made the, the synthetic line, the Ultimo line, they went with a material that does have the properties of uh, the squirrel hair. So it is very soft. I do notice that this holds a lot more, but this does hold an awful lot of paint as well. So yeah, these are these are lovely. I used to use um, the squirrel mops quite a bit. Um, it's not something that I use as much anymore. Um, one thing that I will suggest often to people starting out, because of the functionality of something like this, the ability to load up it, load it up with a lot of paint and cover an area quickly because 
usually it's taking time, going too slow um, with your brush, and then things dry and you go back over it, and then you're getting hard edges and that kind of stuff that comes down to sometimes paper, but also a lot to do with the speed. Um, having a brush that can fill an area quickly uh, can make a big difference. So I usually recommend something like this Hake brush. This is about a one inch wide Hake. Uh, and Hakes are great because, well, number one, they will behave similarly to this in their ability to hold a lot of moisture and cover an area quickly. You're not gonna get some of the versatility in that, you know, with the moisture control, I can get some fine detail work with the with these, the squirrel, the mops. But really covering the area quickly, this does as good a job, um, even arguably maybe a little bit better. And the real benefit too, especially if you're starting out, these are not terribly expensive. You'll find something like this for well less than 10 bucks. I think I paid just a little bit between four and five dollars, maybe about four fifty for for this. So you know they're they're pretty reasonable. I've had this for a number of years. It's quite dirty um, and it's still it's still ticking. So a hockey brush, about a one inch, is the one that I that I will use the most. I do have some that are quite large, but uh, this suits all my purposes all the way up to about a quarter sheet. Now we'll move into some things that are maybe a little bit um, particular to, to people and their specific needs. So um, we'll go with these first. So you'll see this little, well, we'll start with this one, okay? This one, it's a, called a filbert. I've also heard of it called as a cat tongue, cat's tongue. It's kind of a, a neat brush. Um, it's a really great brush for, um, well, <laughs> I've used it for, it's just for painting big leaves. Um, so you can get a nice tip with it and then you just apply a little bit of pressure and it starts going into the fatter part of the brush and then it releases really quickly and paints really nice little leaf shapes. Um, I'll actually just grab a little piece of paper here with that one in mind. Because all the other ones behave, you know, pretty standard but this one is a little bit more unique, if you will. I'm just grabbing some, I got some green paint off to the side here. So you can just little light tip, give it a little bit of pressure and then lift. And you got your leaf, you know, you can grab a little bit of extra paint, drop some value in there, whatever you want to do. So, yeah, really great for, for those types of, of shapes. Good for a lot more than that, too, but, you know, it's, I think it's a very specific use, specific use case brush. Um, but it's something that I kind of came across, tried it out for a little bit. I like it. It's, it's kind of neat. Um, but, uh, yeah. Very, very interesting brush. This one in particular is, I think, a one half size, which is referring to like half an inch in the wide. Then this one here, um, you'll see these around. It's a, I think it's a popular shape for um, urban sketching. What I do like about this, and I have played around with it a little bit, but I just keep going back to rounds, is it's called a dagger and it's you know shaped like a dagger and the interesting thing with this you can use it quite a bit like a, around to an extent just by using this area of the brush but this dagger edge here you can actually use it at an angle and it almost behaves like a quasi flat brush so you can actually use it to spread the paint quite a bit over an area so it's, it's a very versatile brush. It makes a lot of sense to me why it would be popular with some of the urban sketchers, just because of its versatility. But um, yeah, so it's a little, little dagger brush. And an interesting spin on the dagger brush is this brush. So this is uh, a really unique one by Cheap Joe's in the States called Scroggy's Loose Goose. 
Now, I have seen this referred to by another term, which is a little bit more specific, and it's called a sword liner. It's very loose, very floppy, um, and it's kind of like a, a crazy rigger, in my opinion. It's a really great brush for thin, wiry branches. I wouldn't really use this so much for wires. I would definitely go with a rigger for that. But for branches, things that are gonna have a very organic variation in widths, this is a fantastic brush for that type of stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so a sword liner, it's a really, really quite a unique brush. And then we'll go to the last two. Well, the last one, but two versions of it. So you can get a, a watercolor fan brush, which is what this is here, golden nylon. And you can see how nice and uniform it is. These are, are handy. I have it, I just haven't really used this one very much because what I prefer for what I use this type of brush for is I like the longer handled fan brushes and the ones that are more designed for acrylic and oil. So I like the hog hair because it's not very floppy. This one here is actually pretty floppy. And I also cut it all up, make a big mess of the thing. And I use this for sprinkling water into washes to get some texture or sprinkling paint into washes as well. It's a really great splattering brush and it beats the alternative method of splattering, which usually involves a lot of this, which also involves a lot of recoil off the brush and paint coming up into my face. So um, with the long handle fan brush, the firm bristles, I just hold this thing in my hand. I get a nice long distance from the tip and I can just bang on this with my finger close to the paper and get um, a, a really good splattering with this brush. So there are a whole bunch of brushes and um, my thoughts on them and about the ones in particular that I like to use. So I hope that this is uh, at least of some benefit to you. And thanks for watching. If you are enjoying this series of videos, do think consider subscribing and do, you know, give a like to the video. If you don't like this one, but you like my other ones, then don't like this one, like the other one. It's all, it's all good. Um, really, I'm just trying to put these out there and try and help some people out. And my greater hope is that, you know, maybe I'll save you from acquiring a few things that you don't necessarily need in your life and uh, try out some things that, uh, you know, I definitely keep coming back to. I don't, once again, the eight and the 12, fantastic pairing for, for watercolor. So, okay. Thanks everybody. Take care and bye for now.